Well, you made it. The end of the series. You've watched 14 videos. So uh, before I show you how to turn the image sequence into a final video, I do want to say congratulations because um, everyone says they want to learn new skills and very few people actually want to put in the time. So if you're watching this, you have clearly put in the time. So I mean that truly well done. Now, if you are able to go from this series and then go off and create and get what you want out of Blender, then fantastic. Uh, but what I've learned over the years is that there is a percentage of people who want more. They wanna know what tutorials to watch next to level up their career. So I am in the process of creating a Blender course for beginners, mmm, special. So this is going to be for you guys, essentially, people who finish this course and then they want more. They wanna know uh, how do they do other parts of Blender beyond just a donut. So it's not available yet, but I'm looking to release it in early 2024 if I can. Um, so if you wanna be notified when it is available, uh, click the link in the description and you can join a separate email my list just for this course to be notified once it uh, is available. It's not going to be free. It is going to be a paid course, um, but it is, uh, yeah, for people who really want to take this seriously and make a career out of it, that is for you. So with that out of the way, now on to the tutorial. If you followed the last part correctly, you should find inside this folder 160 TIFF files, which are, you know, you can open them individually and look at the images. But if you want to create a video, then this is what you do. If you're using this as part of another video project, um, then you might be using software like Premiere. I know that's not all of you, but I'll just quickly show you for those who wanna use Premiere instead. You just click on the first image and then check image sequence. Uh, that'll import it and then just drag that into a new sequence and there you go. And then you can just import, uh, sorry, export that as you would anything in Premiere or edit it, etc. But if you want to use Blender, if you want to go the free route, there is actually a video editor inside of Blender. Now you can access it from uh, inside here, um, but I actually find it easier and better to just create a new Blender instance. So for that, I go File, New, and then you can go General, but actually if you go Video Editing, um, then that will just set it up for you, ready to go, and it'll just, it saves a bunch of time. This isn't like a special version of Blender or anything when you choose this. Like if you wanna use, you know, the standard Blender layout or whatever, it's still there. It's just, it's created this video, like this screen layout and everything is already configured and ready to go for you. Anyways, so down here, this is your video editor. This is the sequence as it's called. And then up here is gonna show you the video that it's uh, displaying. So the first thing we need to do is load in that image sequence. So shift A, hotkey works all over Blender. Choose image sequence. Navigate to that folder where you have uh, all of these TIFF files. And unlike Premiere where you select the first one and then import that, this one you need to select all of them. So the hotkey is just A to select everything. Hotkeys work everywhere across Blender. And then go add image strip, aha. Now you can see we've got this strip at the bottom here and if we hit the space bar, we should see at the top the uh, image sequence playing. Awesome. Now it looks a little slow and you'll see actually in the top left hand corner it's playing at 24 frames a second. And that's because although we set it up as uh, 30 frames a second, we just rendered that into the uh, image sequence. It doesn't know what the frame rate is. The only reason we did that was so that when you're playing the animation in the viewport, it's actually at the correct speed. But to set it up here, uh, you set your frame rate here from uh, 24 to 30. And now if you play it, you'll see it's going at 30 frames a second. It's a little faster, it's a little smoother, and uh, it looks good, great. Now you can see it just kind of ends, right? Just goes into like blank nothing. And we don't want that. I wanna really hold on this end frame because this is the important frame where all the donuts are revealed at the end there. And it's really easy to extend the last frame. You just click on the end of that strip at the bottom there till it lights up white. And then you can either click and drag out or hit the hotkey G um, to grab and we can just move it all the way to the end. So 250, that's what the, uh, the final, like the frame range here is, right? If you want it to be longer or shorter, you can change it there, but I'm gonna keep it at 250. So that means now it gets to the end and then it just holds here and lets you soak it in, soak in those, uh, those donuts. Um, cool, and this is fine, you could export this, but I also just wanna have a nice fade out at the end because why not? Just learn about something in the video sequence editor. Um, to do that, I'm gonna go Shift A and then add in a color. 
and the color is already set up as black, so that's fine. So I'm just dragging it over the end here and you can see it just jumps to the color because that's now over the top of that other strip. So it's, it's reading top to bottom. So it's black is over the top. And uh, instead of it being a jump cut to black, we obviously want to fade it. So to do that, just click that, that uh, strip there and then say Shift A and then say Fade, Fade In. And you'll see it's uh, it's hard to read here from this because it's got like black at the bottom. But there is a, actually, can I do that? Uh, I'm using the same uh, hotkey control middle mouse button as when we're using the graph editor. But you can see there is like a slight, uh, like a little ramp up like that. And it's just showing you it's fading in. Um, but there you go, that's the fade in uh, effect there. And what that is doing is it's just created um, a keyframe animation for this opacity slider to just do a very quick uh, fade in there. Um, but there you go. So now that's it. That's what we want. This is what we want to form into a video file, which we could upload to YouTube or Instagram or whatever. So to create that here in your output settings, you want to again, choose a folder that you want to save it to. I usually save it inside of the folder with the frames and I just call it video and then say accept. Now, because we uh, set this up as a new video editing file, it's automatically set the file format for us as FFmpeg video. And this is actually the most flexible. I've never needed AVI JPEG or RAW. It just creates those ginormous gigabyte files that you can never do anything with anyway. So FFmpeg is the one you want because it's got the most options. Um, and go underneath encoding, and this is where you'll find all of your video settings um, for encoding. So the container, that is your, like think of it as the file extension. Right, so if it's a .mov file, that would be QuickTime. If it is a .mkv file, that annoying format that Premiere can't read, and <laughs> it's supposed to be better than MP4s, but nothing can read it except VLC. Anyways, you, that would be Matrov, Mat, Matroska. Matroska is the, the one. WebM, that's like a format that is becoming more common online. You could use that. Anyways, we're gonna use MP4. So that's MPEG4, because uh, that's the most common one that most people need. Video Kodak, we're gonna leave it at the default. F, sorry, H264 is fine. Now, uh, you're, if you're used to like all these settings of bit rates and all that, you can go into that just by setting like constant bit rate and you can change all this. But I usually just choose one of the, uh, think of these as like presets, right? So high quality is probably good enough for most people. If you wanna go even higher quality, perceptually lossless will mean it's almost the highest quality possible so there's no loss. Uh, lossless would put it at no loss at, at all so it's like the highest quality. I don't think you ever need that. Like perceptually lossless is probably fine for like more than every case you would need, right? So perceptually lossless. And that's it. Um, oh, audio. We don't have any audio. If you wanted to, you could add in sound here if you wanted to. We don't have audio. So I'm going to set the audio codec to no audio. I don't think it makes a difference to the output, but anyway. And uh, that's it. So now what do you do to export this? The same as before, it's render animation. And what this does is it just chews through those frames in the sequence. And you can see at the bottom there how fast it's going. And it's gonna fade out, boop, and that's it. So the reason it did that, by the way, is like, cause like how would it know like not to render from the camera? Cause we just said render animation. It's because in your, oh, where is it? Way at the bottom there on my face we've got post-processing and it's set to sequencer, right? And if it detects anything in your sequencer, if it detects anything in this strip here, it will then render this instead of what is in the camera. So that's how it knows to use those frames instead of render. Anyways, all to say, look, we have our video. Da -da 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 Playing nicely, holds, oh, soak it up. Look at them donuts, fade out. Da -da. So well done, you did it. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the series. If you want a challenge, ooh, why not create some donut variations? You could change the color of the icing and then model some star-shaped sprinkles and then you've got a patriotic donut scene. Mm.
you could use the polygon add-on to import some of our free candles and then some moonlight for a moody candlelight donut scene. You could experiment with some different marble textures. There's a lot there. You could make the sprinkles gold. You could add in some whiskey glasses, a serving board for a high class, expensive donut looking scene. You could decorate it with fruit and palm tree models for a tropical themed donut scene. Or you could add in some pumpkins, change the colors around, and you've got a fall themed donut scene. There's a lot that you could do, so have a stab. Have a go at it and try to elevate this and make the donut scene your own because that's where the real learning comes in. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in a future video.